Hey guys, Karen here. So I am starting a new little segment uh, and this is a segment one. I'm going to call it Coffee Chats with Karen or Horse and Coffee Chats with Karen. <laughs> so I've got my coffee here and it's uh, Saturday morning here in Australia and my puppies are still asleep. Um, they're relaxing. And I thought before I'd go out and start my horses, I would um, just have a chat. Basically, coffee chats are me just having a chat um, about a topic I'd like to talk about with your horses, um, with your off-the-track thoroughbreds. And yeah, look, I, I like talking on video, so I thought, what a perfect way. Just, um, you know, relaying information to you, um, educational information. Um, yeah, whatever we want to talk about, basically. But uh, this is um, a coffee chat. And I wanted to talk about a, a post I saw in one of the Facebook groups yesterday uh, that triggered me in thinking, well, this is why people have problems with um, their off-the-track thoroughbreds. Um, or horses in general when it comes to education but uh, someone was having problems with their horse going forward so I'm just gonna have a sip of my coffee being coffee chat <laughs> their horse they were riding through quite a small uh, lane and uh, their horse was jacking up and not what saw the cow so the cattle came over um, and the horse was quite um, nervous um, and, and anxious about the cuddle. She could feel his heart rate um, increase. So uh, he didn't want to go forward, uh, jacking up. And if it was a gelding, I can't remember now, but um, yeah. Uh, so this is quite a common issue, not only in your off the track thoroughbreds, but quite often it'll happen with racehorses. Many racehorses, you know, they, uh, for many reasons, will um, what we call um, jack up, you know, not go forward, um, refuse to go forward, spin around, they can spin around, depending on what behaviour they're doing, they might um, jack up um, and rear up or um, spin around, turn the other way. Um, it's not a very uh, pleasant experience because sometimes horses can really panic and, uh, you know, flip over or throw themselves down. So it's not a good situation to be in. But it just uh, triggered me on wanting to talk about how important it is in retraining what is called the basic foundation. So even though um, this particular person got out of it by doing neck flexing and neck bending, it's not solving the problem. Uh, we want to make sure that our horse is really... Um, trained or with off the track thoroughbreds retrained to your basic responses so your basic responses are your stop and go um, anything that you know when you're first starting a horse out the first things we teach them is stop with the reins go forward with the legs uh, when they go into racing quite often before the, uh, thoroughbreds even enter into racing their foundation training it's called foundation training is not consolidated and it's not um trained uh I'm gonna, I'm, I suppose I'll say correctly, it's probably, it can be very rushed and very basic because stopping and going to light responses is not a priority with racehorses. Um, we get them out there young. The priority for them is, you know, to, to race and to gallop and to perform um, in, in, in racing. So having them nice and light and responsive. Some, you know, some are educated very well. Others, maybe not so. Uh, quite often they can be... Um, you know, so the old school broken in by trainers that um, have a very strong racing background. Um, and, you know, it's more focused on getting them out on the track. So we need to be aware of that when we take on and off the track thoroughbred, not only when, um, if they may not have had um, very uh, consolidated and correct foundation training, they tend to lose that in racing because racehorses <coughs> work very differently than what we want them to work uh, like in our equestrian disciplines. We want them light, we want them listening to our rain aids and stopping, uh, going forward with our leg aids. <coughs> listening to my voice here. <coughs> You know, and if we get in a tricky situation, we want to, them to listen to our leg aids. Like if 
<coughs> for a perfect example in show jumping we don't want our horse to be balking at the jumps um, refusing jumps so that's a similar situation to this particular horse not wanting to go back um, part, uh, you know past the cows because they are very nervous I love coffee <laughs> So it's really important to see how see how important um, retraining is for your off the track thoroughbred. Um, as I was saying in racing, um, even if they have had a correct, um, you know, correctly trained and consolidated with their basic foundations, their stop and go, and they're moving really nice and lightly. And a lot of um, thoroughbreds are um, educated that way before they enter racing. A lot aren't, but they tend to lose that because in racing, the um, their adrenaline is very high. You know, they're they're trained for speed. They're trained to race. They use their body in a completely different way. Um, they tend to lean more on the forehand. We uh, they ride up onto the bit and they're stretching into the bit and leaning into bit pressure in their fast work and their pace work. So they quite often will depend on bit pressure, um, de lean into the bit and depend on that for their balance as well. So when we take them off the track, it's just a completely different world for them. And it's really important to go right back to basics and retrain, or sometimes it's like training properly, um, you know, in, from get, well, it is from get go, um, your basic responses. And then when you come to difficult situations like um, going past some cattle that are scary, they may never have seen before, um, or you know, you're out doing your show jumps and they are a little bit hesitant in going over a jump, you have trained them to respond to your leg aid lightly. Uh, so it's really important that the first thing you do is to, um, when you get your off the track thoroughbred, where do you start? Uh, my system is I call it holistic retraining. So in a holistic retraining program, you always address the rehabilitation side first. So you have your, um, what I call phase one, you get them and you want them to let down. Okay, so letting down is particularly if they've come straight out of a, 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 a prep, a racing prep and they're, they're fit, they've just had their last start. Um, they're going to be very rock hard fit. They're going to be tight in their muscles. They're quite often going to be a little bit sore in their muscles. So you want them to, you, you, you get them and you want their muscles to start to soften a bit. So it's like molding, um, re-sculpting a horse, but you can't sculpt um, their posture and their muscles if they're rock hard fit. And they're also rock hard in their mind too. You know, um, they've come out of a very demanding racing environment. So we want to be very gentle with them. Um, understanding, realizing that they've been in a very regimented routine. Routine's very good for horses in general, particularly off the track thoroughbreds. Horses like routine and like to know what to expect. Um, they like to be able to predict their environment and have control over their environment. That's why training very clear responses is important because it gives horses the ability to control um, the removal of pressure say with your legs because they know how to remove the pressure by doing a certain response so it's really important to um, put the welfare of the horse first but to uh, firstly do your phase one which is your rehabilitation so we have our off the track thoroughbred let's we know they've come from a very demanding environment um, bracing um, they've been on a very high grain high concentrate diet um, they quite often will have gastric ulceration, hind gut, acidity, um, and, you know, can be aggravated in their gut. So we want to rehabilitate their digestive system and their gut health. You want to then look at um, body work issues. So this is when I, with the letdown period, when you get your horse, you sort of get to know them, um, check out where they are um, in their health, in their um, how they're feeling in themselves. Are they muscle sore? <coughs> I'm losing my voice. Uh, look at their feet. You're sort of analysing and evaluating. Okay, here's my beautiful off the track thoroughbred. Now let's look. I know he's come out of racing or she's come out of racing. Very demanding environment. They've um, trained very differently than what I will be looking for 
um, in whatever I want to do, whether you want to go into show jumping, dressage, pleasure. Um, so understand that this is going to be a process and to uh, then be patient and take one step at a time and realize that it's a big change for your off the track thoroughbred coming out of racing they've entered racing very young they've entered racing you know when they're a yearling basically or even uh you know they they go through um yearling prep um they go through weanling handling but they even before they turn a yearling um they're quite often put in you know individual stables and they're starting their weanling prep they're definitely um individually you know they come in for yearling prep so they enter the industry very young they're isolated um away from other horses even though they quite often see other horses is they can't get that often can't get that tactile interruption which is very good for a horse's development so often uh, off the track thoroughbreds will be detached they may not like being touched they have a bit of an, a detachment about them because they haven't had that equine touch you know where they they're very social animals they're like us horses are a social animal they need the physical touch and they don't get that from their own species because they're individually stabled and they don't that they do get handled from humans obviously in racing but it's not it, it's more of a unless it's an individual experience some horses will will get nurtured and pampered more than others others uh they're a workhorse they get saddled bridled you know and quite often touch is a negative experience for them their muscles sore a lot you know when they when they're racing and when they're in training so they don't want their their body to be touched or they may have sore muscles so be aware that your off the track thoroughbred may be cranky um they'll dislike touch because you know they they've got a negative experience of maybe just being rushed or you know being saddled and bridled to get out for track work or they've been girthed up when their muscle sore they may have had a badly fitting saddle or a rider that's you know not pleasant on their back um lots of different things so understanding and awareness of where they've come from and being aware that it's really important to look at the taking on and off the track thoroughbred is also taking on um, a rehabilitation um, case <laughs> and a re-education uh, case. So please be aware of um, the importance of re-education, retraining the basic foundations. So I won't, I won't keep this video too long because I could talk forever, but I wanted to just point out what you want to do you know where to you know what it is with taking it off the track thoroughbred and i in my retraining programs i do the way i retrain off the track thoroughbreds and teach is two phases you have phase one which is your rehabilitation um before you go into any retraining so your gut health your body health letting down um, all of that and then we go into once our horse we know is pain free healthy um uh, you've addressed any gut and ulcer issues um, you've um, gradually changed his diet to a high fiber, high forage diet. I prefer grain free uh, and I like to give them gut supplements as well. And then you look at your re-education um, phase. So where do you start with your re-education? Okay, my health, the horse is healthy. I want to get on and ride, but okay, best. And it's really, really important to start off with it. Barking. No dogs, they're all in the bed. I think you should see them. They're cheeky little buggers. Ah, I'm doing a video. Thank you. Ah, ah, Ruth. <laughs> so the dogs are going to bark, so I won't keep it too long. But your re education starts off right back in hand work, lead rope um, or bridle and reins in hand work, um, and then introducing a dressage whip, which is going to be an issue in itself because. Oh, not an issue, but we need to um, habituate our off-the-track thoroughbred to the dressage whip often because they may have um, be a bit nervous of it. Um, whips obviously are used in racing um, and they can be a bit fearful of it. But that's part of what I do in when I go through the re-education and I teach it. And our re-education starts off, I've got these awesome little cards. So I follow the equitation science principles. Now I'm going to, you can buy them on the Equitation Science International website, but it's your little training toolkit. 
Um, and uh, these practical tool kit cars will help you apply the principles of equitation science to your riding and training. So what I wanted to go through is just the shaping scale. So we start off um, teaching our stop and go. So let's go back to the example of, of this particular horse that didn't want to go past the cows that were scary. So it, this is a symptom of deficits or holes in his training. Um, and he's obviously nervous. So he's been put in an environment that um, it's a bit like flooding, too much for him to cope with, whether he's seen the cattle before. But if he's a racehorse, he's probably never seen cows before. But um, he's been, um, oh, he's in, a, in, a in an environment that's overstimulated him. It's frightened him. So he's sort of been put into something that's too much for him at the moment. Um, I would always, um, you know, you, if your horse is scared of something, you start off and train their basic responses in an in like a round yard um, or um, an arena where they're comfortable and then you can start to gradually take them outside and introduce them to more um, stimulating in environments that are a bit more challenging. So this is just an example of, okay, um, this person was having a problem with their horse and it's just saying, it's just showing her, okay, this is showing me where my horse is in his training and what I need to do. Um, so what this particular person needs to do is to go back, right back to the basic foundations and train their stop and go in hand. If your horse isn't going forward under leg pressure, like um, you know, refusing to go over a jump or refusing to go past cattle, that's showing a sign that they're not clear in their training of going forward in hand, okay, uh, as well as on, under saddle. But everything under saddle is reflective of your in hand. So if you train your in hand go forward to a very nice forward response with your horse, then that will go forward and um, definitely help when training your under saddle forward. So it's going to already get you on the roll to training a really nice light response with your forward aids under saddle. How do we train it? So um, I'll show you the shaping scale, but our first responses, let me just see if we've got our responses here. Let's have a look. So we were train we're training the aids, okay? We're training our aids. Here we go. So the ten basic responses we want to train in our horse. It's probably backwards here, okay? But you want to train your ten bag. Go back and retrain with off the track thoroughbreds because they've habituated to a lot of pressure. They're not light and soft with the aids. You want to train your go, go forwards from your lead rein pressure, go forwards from your leg aid, and then consolidated into any challenging environments. Your stop, which is your halt and your rein back, your step back, your turn. So you want, if you, your turns, whatever, whether you're out riding pleasure, you want your horse to turn nice and lightly and in self-carriage, whether you're competing in dressage or show jumping, you want your horse to be not leaning and hanging on the bit, but turning nice and light and in self-carriage. So you train that. Oh, there we go. Go, stop, turn. We train head down as well, head control, okay? But that's not forcing the horse in a head frame. But, um, and then we break it up. So we go into, um, you know, you can train your horse, go, go faster, go slower, lengthen their strides, stop, down gate, collection. So this is all examples of just say for dressage, you're shortening your stride into a collected trot. But I won't um, go into too much detail because I talk a lot and my videos go long. But I just wanted to give you an idea of, this is exactly where you start with your off the track thoroughbred. You, um, you may notice when you first get them that they like this particular horse, he doesn't want to go forward past the cattle. Um, and then he's telling you, it's just showing you a sign. Okay, well, there he is. This, the, the, that's where my horse is at, my off-the-track thoroughbred with his training. And this is what I need to do. Um, otherwise, this situation is going to exasperate into maybe something more dangerous. It's just going to get worse. Um without going back and doing these in hand and then under saddle. And then we'll go into the shaping scale in our next coffee chats, hey? So we're getting up to about 19 minutes here. So I'll do, I won't keep our coffee chats any longer than 20 minutes. I'll try not to. But um, yeah, let me know if you want to see more coffee chats. 
Um, and I love chatting. I love talking all, all about horses, um, off the track thoroughbreds and equitation science, uh, obviously my passion and my spe specialty off the track thoroughbreds. Um, and that's why I thought I'd set up a little training series, coffee chats with Karen with horses. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this little video um, and I will see you in the next coffee chat. Bye.